If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I like to customize things a lot. Like, I rice everything. If it's a window manager or a desktop environment, a terminal, Rofi, D-menu, you name it, I'm going to rice it. And I don't think that this is all that uncommon in the Linux community. I think that customizing the look and feel of your operating system is one of the things that draws a lot of people to Linux. So what I thought I would do today is talk about my five favorite color schemes. Now... When it comes to color schemes, everything is subjective, right? Something that I like might not be something that you like. And that's really okay because there's a ton of different pre-made color schemes out there. And if you don't like any of those, you can always make your own. But one of the things that I've found over the last five years or so of using Linux, I'm horrible at making my own color schemes. I'm just not good at it. I don't have that kind of coordination to tell you what goes with what. When I do try to make my own, they don't come out looking all that great. So... So the color schemes I'm going to be talking about today are all pre-made. None of them were created by me. And I will link them in the video description below if you want to ch try them out. I will also link my dot files below, but my dot files are always in the video description anyway, so that's not going to be much of a change. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first color scheme on the list is One Dark. And this is what a One Dark rice looks like. It is probably the most popular color scheme on the planet by far. Everyone... And their brother uses one dark. And that's one of the reasons why I'm putting it so high on the list or so low on the list, however you want to try it. Because this is one of those ones that you've definitely heard of, you've probably used before, and you might use it now. And it's okay. It has uh, it has the bluish Nord background, so it's kind of like a very navy blue. And then it has a whole bunch of very bright pastel colors that go along with it. Not necessarily all that original, but when it first came out, it was original, but you've probably seen a ton of different color schemes that are based on one dark so it's kind of like the ubuntu of color schemes i'm just going to put that out there that's what one dark looks like number two on the list is nord and this is what nord looks like i'm not the biggest fan of nord to tell you the truth it's really quite blue for me like it's like really really blue but it, a lot of people like it and it is very very readable is one of the things that a lot of people like about it and it's not offensive when it comes to a whole bunch of different colors now other than my rice being broken for some unknown reason i'm not actually sure what's going on there the idea behind nord is that you have varying colors of blue and that's what you get with this there there are some colors associated with nord so you do get some reds greens yellows and some very light purples but for the most part you're meant to use the blues and even like the whites have a blue tint to them so if you don't like blue nord's probably not going to be for you that kind of rhymed the next one on the list is called sonakai and sonakai is a theme that comes with several different variations the one you're looking at minus the wallpaper is called sonakai maya and basically it has a very like bluish gray background with pastel colors as the main feature and i like this because it's very readable and the vim theme if you have it installed is very nice as well it does come with a lot of different variations as i said so there, there are some that are lighter than this there are some that are darker than this so one of the best parts about sonakai is that it has different variations now one of the things i didn't really mention when it comes to nord is that nord does have several different variations as well so I've never really tried any of those out, so I can't speak to how good they are. So that's kind of be, going to be up to you to test. But when it comes to Sonakai, the variations are all very good. I just happen to like the Maya version. The downside of Maya, or I should say the downside of Sonakai itself, is that there's not a lot of wallpapers out there that go with it very well. The wallpaper I've chosen here is actually a Monokai wallpaper. It doesn't really go well with it all that great, but... What are you going to do? Most likely, if I were to use this theme long term, I would have to make my own wallpaper, which is something I've done in the past. The fourth one on the list is probably the one that I've spent the most time with over the last five years, and that is Dracula. Dracula is an amazing color scheme, and it is very, very popular. If One Dark is the most popular theme out there, Dracula is for sure number two. And for good reason. It has a lot of contrast and a lot of bright colors, and it's not a ripoff of any other color scheme out there, really. It's not, yes, it's blue or purplish blue, 
but it's not the same as Nord. It's not the same as One Dark. It's its own thing, and it's really, really nice. The great thing about it being so popular is there's tons of wallpaper out there. There's icons. There's GTK themes. If you want to do a Dracula Rice of your own, you can do that basically no matter what window manager or desktop environment you're on. You're going to find all the things that you need in order to get that to work. That's not true of everything that's on this list. Nord will probably get you there. One Dark for sure. Sonakai, probably not so much. That one's pretty rare, and it's not going to have all the full features that you're going to find with all the rest of them that are on this list, unfortunately. But definitely Dracula is going to, is very full featured when it comes to everything that you'd need in order to do a rice GTK and cute themes and all that stuff. All those things exist. The last one on the list is Grovebox. Now, I don't know if Grovebox is actually how you say it. Some people probably call it Groovebox. I'm not actually sure. It doesn't really matter. I call it Grovebox. That's what I've always called it. But the point of Grovebox is that it is different. It's not blue. Okay, everything else on this list other than Sonakai, and even Sonakai has some bluish overtones to it, it has blue in it. Like, it's a, a purplish blue or a light blue. They're all blue. And if you don't like blue, well... There's not a lot of options out there for you, unfortunately, unless you're going to go with like a bright theme and then you're kind of going to ruin your eyesight or something. Grovebox, it has blue in it. Like you can see it has a blue right here. But the rest of the colors, they're not blue. They're brown. And this theme is not for everyone. I will be the first to admit. And at one point, I couldn't stand it. I thought it was the ugliest thing ever. But once I did a rice of it and messed around with it for a little while, it became my absolute favorite color scheme out there, bar none. I mean, Dracula probably comes close, because it's also really, really good, and I do use Dracula quite often, but Grovebox is amazing. And just like Dracula and One Dark, really, there are a ton of things that go along with it. So you can find GTK themes, you can find a lot of wallpapers, things like that. The only downside to the Grovebox color scheme is there's not a Cavantum theme. So if you're using Plasma, I've never been able to find a Cavantum theme for Grovebox, which is really disappointing because you don't have any of the fancy things that Cavantum can do. You could create one, and I do plan on creating one myself eventually, but it just doesn't exist right now. There is a Plasma theme for it, but it's not really all that great, to be honest with you. It's kind of forest green. I mean, it's it, it's really kind of weird. It doesn't matter. But the point is, is that it does have a lot of full featured stuff around it. And because it's so popular, there's a lot of wallpapers and such like that. So those are the top five color schemes, according to me. I will admit that narrowing this down to five was really freaking hard because I have probably 10 or 15 rices for I3 at this point. And some of them are pretty good and they didn't make the list. Some of them aren't quite finished yet. So those didn't make the list yet either. But I know that a lot of people have their own color schemes. A lot of people like solarized. Some people like brighter themes. Some people like darker themes, like Monokai. There are a ton of different color schemes. So, down in the comment section below, what I want from you, and I want everyone who watches this video to do this, leave a comment of what your favorite color scheme is. Because I'd really like to know, because there's chances are... Someone out there is going to be using a color scheme that I've never heard of before, and I want to use it because I want to use all the color schemes because that's what I do. Now, I, there is one called like Everforest or Evergreen or something like that that I have not made a rice of yet that looks really, really cool. That's become really popular the last few months. So that's definitely one they'll probably make the list when I do this video again, you know, in a couple of years or something. So anyways, in the comment section below, your favorite color scheme. Go do that now. Hit the like button on your way down there. I'd really appreciate that. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all of these fine people. I can't even begin to say how thankful I am to everyone who supports me on Patreon and YouTube. So thanks so very, 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 very much to all of you who support me that way. And thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.